We just cut this 16 inch door round in a 12 inch laser bed and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified of our new videos. This week, we're taking our Omtech Polar Laser to the limit. Have you ever wanted to make a 16 inch door round but have a 12 by 20 laser bed and you think to yourself, I can't make that. We're gonna show you how we use light burn in our polar laser to cut a 16 inch round out of quarter inch MDF. Step one, we're gonna pull an Evil Knievel and do a ramp test. We're gonna find the optimal or best height for our laser lens using a project board and two pieces of scrap MDF. We're gonna create a ramp inside the laser. Let's start by getting a camera capture of our cutting area. We're gonna select the laser lid camera. Then let's grab a screen, whoop, maybe I should close the lid. Then we'll grab a, a screen capture. Now I'm gonna draw a line using the pen tool. I'm gonna to click. Hold shift, it'll snap it vertical, it'll snap it horizontal, then I'll click. Let's hit escape, that'll kill it, and go back to the selection tool. I'm gonna grab this, let's go back to our cut area. I'm gonna make this red. I like red for cuts, so we're gonna use red. We're gonna use five millimeters for speed and 50 power. Just kind of guessing, I'm just looking at focal height right now, or focal point. Focus height. <laughs> Let's move this up to the edge. We're gonna move this line up to the edge. I wanna be able to use this material, but I wanna be able to run a ramp test on this material, so I'm just trying to catch the edge. Now let's hit start. The focal height is the distance between the bottom of your lens to the top of your material. And that distance changes with the thickness of your material. So if you change the thickness of materials, then you're gonna change that focal height. That is your z-axis and you'll adjust that using this ramp test. You'll see we'll start at the top of the ramp, your line will be thicker. It'll get thinner where it's cutting through the cleanest and then it'll get thicker again because it's too far away. We're gonna find the thinnest, cleanest part of this line and we're gonna circle it using a pencil. That is where we're gonna set our focal point to. We're gonna move the laser head back to the pencil marks. Then I'm gonna use this tiny little clear triangle that came in our toolbox and I'm gonna put this in the gap. I'm gonna mark where the center of that laser head falls on this clear little triangle, and that is our focus height. Now I can remove these two little pieces of scrap MDF and lay the project board flat. I can then put the triangle back on the material and lower that Z axis or lower the laser head until it hits that mark. And now our focal height is set. We are ready to go. Step two, we're gonna do a speed and power test. <laughs> but with the laser. The purpose of the speed and power test is to know exactly what speed, what power you need to use to cut through this material that we've just measured. And you wanna use the least amount of power to get through the material. Now we're gonna use this material test cut card to find our optimal speed and power settings. I'm just gonna move this up in the corner and we're gonna hit start. This should tell us exactly what our speed and power is for this material. Each of these circles that are being cut out has a different speed and a different power. All of the ones on the left side are at a five millimeter using a different power, and it goes up to a 15 millimeter per second using those same powers. All right, we have our card all cut out. It looks like the best place where it went through the cleanest was probably five millimeter per second at 50% power. Step three, time to make our cuts. <laughs> we're gonna jump over into Lightburn and we're gonna import our SVG file. All right, inside Lightburn, we're just gonna start by importing our SVG. Double click. Now you can see this is bigger than my cut area. I can break up most of this, but the backer is definitely bigger than my cut area. So I'm gonna break this into two pieces. So to do that, I'm gonna go get a puzzle piece that I have. Drag this in. I'm gonna line up my puzzle piece. Zoom in a little bit. I want my little puzzle pieces here to land underneath the ribbon. 
So I'm going to drag it where I think it'll land under the ribbon. Let's squish this a little bit. Squish it up so everything lands inside that little ribbon. All right. I'm going to select both the backer and the puzzle piece. Copy, Control C, paste, Control V. And I'm going to ungroup this one. See how my score marks are grouped with my backer? I'm, I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to select the backer piece, just the backer, the cut file, the cut piece, and then the puzzle piece. Then I'm going to go over here to subtract, Boolean subtract. So this is going to take the piece from the top. See, now I have little puzzle pieces cut in there. I'm going to do something similar over here on this one. I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to select the backer and then my puzzle piece. And then down here, I'm going to use intersect. This will, again, do a different type of cut, but it's going to cut the bottom piece out. So now I have two puzzle pieces. I don't need the score marks or the ribbon holes on this side. So I'll delete these. And now, to make sure they fit like a nice, tight, snug puzzle piece, I'm going to select both the bottom of the backer and the top of the backer. I'm going to give it another color. We'll say color number 10. And inside color number 10, I'm going to double click color number 10. And inside here, I'm going to add a little offset curving. So I'm just going to give it two clicks up. So it's 0 0.00197. That's my offset. That's how much it's gonna add to the outside, outwards, of my cut. This should help keep it nice and snug. Then for our power settings, anything, well, let me group this first. Let me group, group. Now let's set our power settings. My speed is 250 millimeters a second, and my power is gonna be 25. This is my score, my cut, According to my little cut chart here, according to my little test cuts, it looks like um, it will go through nice and clean at five millimeters a second and 50% power. I'm gonna do this for number 10 also. It's gonna be five millimeters per second and 50 power. Okay. All right, let's frame this out. You notice I have this checked, cut selected graphics. So even though the bottom is on the cut area, I don't have it selected. It doesn't have a little marquee around it. It won't get picked up in the cut. So let me frame this and then we'll cut it. All right, the first part came out great. Now it's time to cut the bottom half. So we'll just select both of these. We'll move the bottom half up. We'll select this. We'll hit frame. And then we'll cut it. I went ahead and cut two puzzle pieces, one with kerfing and one without. So this one here is without kerfing. You'll see that it goes together very easily and it's got a lot of play. Two but even two. without the kerfing, once we get it put back together here. Yeah, it'll, it'll work. It's a little wiggly. You're gonna glue a center banner across here, but the pressure is on the puzzle pieces so it actually hangs in those grooves. So it'll work without the curving, but with the curving, it's a little bit tighter. It actually goes together with a little bit of squeak and you'll notice it's not as flimsy. It's a little bit tighter. So if you glue the banner across here, I think it'll really hold pretty well. I don't think you'll even notice once it's glued that it is a puzzle piece. Did you know you could get all of our files, behind the scene content, and even a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast? 
as well as monthly Zoom calls, access to a secret Facebook group, and we'll even send you one of these fancy t-shirts, all for $20 a month. It's the best way to support this channel. So join us over at Patreon.com. Step four. And now we paint. We're just going to paint our backer and all of our little pieces using these foam rollers. Quick paint. Quick paint. Time to put this puzzle together with a little bit of Starbond super glue. We're just gonna work from the bottom up. Puzzle piece is still in place. I painted it that way. Using the score marks, the great thing about these files is they have score marks so they do show you where to place your items so you don't have anything that's not centered perfectly. beautiful sign with the puzzle piece in the back with the puzzle piece in the back you never know you never know it's pretty sturdy it's a brand new design so this is the first time we're showing you guys this design took no time at all and we are out of time so if you're not going to join us for the patron after show we will see you next friday where we'll do it build it, and make it again oh and don't forget to catch us live every tuesday we do something new have a little chat and bounce some signs. That's it.